Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, no matter where you are in the world. This is Howie, and I'm here to help you win with money. Today is July 9, 2021. This is the last trading day of week number 27, and markets are at an all-time high for S&P 500. And I don't remember if it's true for NASDAQ and the Dow. I mostly track the S&P 500, so I'm excited about that. So it's a good week, even though... Uh, early in this week, some people got a little bit afraid due to the little minor correction. Before we move on to trades, let me just share. If you're on Facebook, join Investing 102. Here you can level up your investment knowledge with other seasoned investors. The other place that you can find me is in this uh, Financially Fit Club where we uh, share different things here. So this is a great uh, Facebook group. Uh, where you can reach out to me there. Today I'm going to do a trade in a different account, Fidelity. I sold some AMC earlier this week and I made some profit. So I have uh, several thousand dollars in my account. I'm going to add in uh, Palantir, you see from here. Let me show you the chart, what happened here. There was a big run up earlier this year, hit 45 bucks. I want to get into it now. This is something I'm willing to wait one year, I mean much longer than that. So I'm just going to pick up 100 shares. So I'm just going to place that order now. And there you go, enter new order. Whoops. So let me add a dividend stock next. So I think I have a change of mind. I think I want to buy something that I've been following for a while. It's a $11 billion market cap. Uh, they make tasers and I like them because they are a software as a service type business You see the revenues have been growing Earnings have not been so good, but I do think I do think there's some opportunity here for me to make some money You see the yearly range. It's actually down from the yearly range I wish I had money earlier because it was a much cheaper look at this It was much lower, but I'm gonna buy some shares. I think I'm gonna put about five thousand dollars into it So that's what I'm gonna do here and okay i think i'm okay with that and then i think we're done with that trade so i moved back to e-trade i want to do a cover call this cover call i already have it looks like it's going to expire worthless i mean it's 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 for um another 22 days so i want to roll it out and collect some more premium i don't want to wait i collected you can see i collected 40 cents to close it, it's 15 cents today. And I was thinking most of the premiums collected. So how the math works out is this. If I, I just create a simple spreadsheet, you can enter the share price and everything you need so that you can see why I would do something like this. If the if this goes away, I think it will. It's not going to move much. So what I can do is create a new cover call. I'm going to roll it out. Here's the strike price. So you can see it, it means the share will need to move 10% in the next, well, it's really six weeks now, I think. And then if you collect a premium on the midpoint here, it means you collect the $22. So the ROI is about 1% higher, 14 days. If you analyze that, that's 29% a year. That's not really how you should look at it because most people are not going to be able to duplicate this trade every 14 days for the exact same premium. So let me just put this trade in. I may have to lower all the way up to about 16 cents to get this trade across. But even at that point, it's still worth it. If you look at the worst case scenario, which is 15 cents, it's a 20% annual rate of return. Roughly another, you're collecting a little bit under percent for 14 more days. So that's the way you got to look at it. And there you go. I just rolled that forward and I did get my whatever it was, 17 or $18. I decided not to do it on the SP 500. It was not worth the commission that I would have to pay for the premium that I collect. But on this one, I think I can make this one work. So I'm gonna try it on the Visa one. I'm gonna roll the untested side up for a little bit more premium, and we'll see how that will go. I think Visa is not gonna go back down. The reopening trade will mean Visa is gonna to continue to move up. People will start spending more, traveling more, and everything else. So credit card usage will increase. So that's the way I'm playing Visa right now. So I have an iron condor on it. I'm just going to roll this up real quick. Let's see, can I get that across? Not yet. 
I'll make it go across. I need this done. So in order to do this trade, I'm just going to close it. And it sh it's showing that I need to close it for a few dollars. I'm just going to keep on moving this up. Seven dollars, eight dollars. Let's see. Let's see what I need to do to close. I want to open a new one for Paycom. It's going to cost me a little bit more. Let's try five cents. I'll just keep on moving this up until it sells. So I want to put on a new trade for Paycom. I'm just going to do a put spread. And I want to see if I can collect 85 for this. Free contracts. I put it pretty far out at, at free 20. And if you look at Power E trade, Paycom for August expiration, which is 42 days, free 20 puts you right around minus 8 delta or a 10% chance of happening. So I'm going to try to do something like this and collect a few hundred bucks. And that's how I decided these values is a $10 wide. I'm risking $2,000 for a, pop, a, a chance to make about a hundred bucks in profit. I'll exit out early. And this is the buying power. You'll see that. Oh, I did free contracts. So I said the math wrong. So it's 3000 bucks at risk. Okay, here you go. Less than three minutes later, I got the pay comma across. So I, I moved it out a little bit further, but I did reduce the risk. Before I had a, it was expiring in two weeks for a free 40. I moved it down to a free 20 now. So again, adding more time, a little bit more days, you can lower it. I collected the premium today and we'll see what happens. And the market's almost closed. So I put in the last one. I have a Bank of America cover call. It was already in the money. I decided to move it up one more dollar. But in order to do so, you see what I have to do? I got to push it literally three months, um, November, December, and then January. And I did it. It cost me, well, actually, I got five cents premium for it. But it was worth it because it cost me five, but I gained a dollar. And I know it pushes out further in, but I don't want to lose my Bank of America shares. My cost bases are like $10 a share. So there's a reason for doing it like that. And with that being said, the market's going to close in a few minutes. There's two minutes left to market. It looks like it's going to finish strong. So this is a great trading week um, or a great week for your stock market portfolio. Not trading so much because um, I've been... I've been tested on all the call side on all my iron condor, which is really a bad thing. Um, but again, I am using the call side for more of a hedge against the, uh, I make money on the put side or when the markets are flat. Obviously, I'm going to lose a little bit of money for the last, uh, for the last three months have been that way. As long as the markets keep on going one direction, I will lose a little bit of money in trading. But I make up for it from all the money I gain on my 401k plan. With that being said, hey guys. Comment below. Let me know what you're doing. Let me know what type of trades you're doing right now. How are you protecting yourself or how are you making money in this uh, market? Don't forget, let's do this together. Let's do this $1 at a time. As always, have a profitable day. Bye-bye.